Your Highness, thank you so much for joining CNBC. It's great to see you again. Thank you. Now, I've been covering this hair show for more than a decade, and it's a strange thing by day two, by the time we sit down and talk to each other, not to have heard a really, really massive deal announced. What's the story behind that? You know, I think the, the Dubai uh, air show always, it's a place, we want to place our order. You know, it's good for Dubai, it's good for the show and placing today. A 50 Airbus A3, uh, 5900, it's worth $16 billion. You know, it's a good news for the industry. I'm sure you will hear also from the others within the UAE today something as good. In terms of what we've seen over the past years, 2013, 206 billion dollars announced. 2017, over 100 billion dollars of deals announced. Yeah. What are we going to see by the end of this week? You know, I think you will see, see a good number from the different. I think also you have to expect that there is aircraft to be delivered over those years. You don't expect that always will be the same numbers, you know, of aircraft. But also we have to think that the model of the aviation sector within the UAE really it's mature. You know, the competition is there. Everybody want to follow that that model, you know, but really it has served the country very well in terms of growth, tourism, in the financial sector, economy, cargo, you name it, you know, the development of the airport, infrastructure, and we go hand in hand with all the development of the UAE, and we really thank our leaders also on the other side of, of the business and what they are doing. Members of the aviation industry, though, in particular, are concerned, they tell me, that this era of lower oil prices is impacting the ability of countries like the UAE to make those big purchase orders. Is that something that you're worried about? You know, I think, I think you know, if we look at, at the UAE, also they're trying to diversify their, their economy. I'm not talking about Dubai. Dubai, you know, they don't have much, much, much oil. But at the UAE, they diversifying. They are going into different sectors. Their investment here, abroad, you know, and that's really paying off the way we we see it. So when it comes to the tourism side, for example, it is a growing market. We see the number of hotels being built in the UAE and, and Dubai. We should not forget that next year we have the Expo and our promise to put really the best Expo ever, you know, seeing 25 million people who will visit. Not it will be a local event, it will be an international event. And I think our airlines within the UAE, they will play a major role really to see the big number of people coming from around the globe to Dubai. So you're less concerned with this being a lower deal year than you are with making sure that Expo 2020 is a major success? Excuse me? So you're, lo you're less concerned with 2019 Air Show having less deals on the table than you are with Expo 2020 being a major success? No, I, th I think if we look at it, it still will be an excellent deal by the end of uh, the, the five days of at the Air Show in terms of, uh, of number. But you cannot expect sometimes to be all the time it's in hundreds of, of, of billions. You know, we have to think that also those aircraft will be delivered. So there is, will always be time and gaps, you know. Are we ever going to see another 2013 with that 206 billion in deals? I always be, uh, I'm optimistic, you know, I think you will, you will see. That. And you know, this, this business in the aviation sector, it's always a challenging uh, sector, you know, when it comes to the business. Because this is a global industry. It's not necessarily that you have a problem somewhere close to you. Whatever, it could be America, the, now between the American and the Chinese also, they have their effects, the oil prices, the currencies, and so on, so on, you know. Maybe it could be a problem in Australia or Sri Lanka or somewhere else, South America. It, it has its effect. But also, we lived those years, I mean, since, I mean, for me, since the last 30 years living in this, uh, we have always to find ways to be able to, to go around if there is any hurdle in front of us. How difficult has the situation in the GCC with Iran made life for you in the industry itself? You know, it is not only in this part of the world, as I said. I mean, I can name you 10 things that has happened 
around the globe that affected our our business this year i mean everybody used to talk about the fuel prices maybe this this year goes okay to that level where we see the prices let's say in the 60 today but we have a, a big hit on currencies you know this year and our currencies were more than fuel you know so you never know what is the future has for you what is it that concerns you most though is it oil prices where they are today using the currency as a weapon conflict in iran u.s china trade fears there's a cornucopia of issues on the table but what is it the, that worries you most you know i mean for me if i will be worrying about what's going on i won't be able to do anything i will just sit and wait what will happen next and i'm sure there is something will be next but we learn always we have to deal with it if there is any problem and not to complain about it. In terms of what's happening here at the air show today, the United States has over 140 exhibitors and they're the largest foreign country exhibiting at the 2019 air show. How does it make you feel that they would put so much money, time and effort into coming to air show 2019 and at the same point fail to pony up when it comes to putting a stand at the Expo 2020. I know, you know, it's different, I think, for the American because usually it's not the government behind it, but the business behind it. But that's going on now, and we will see the American are there at, at the Expo besides, in total, about 192 countries who will be exhibiting at, at, at the Expo. You will see, for example, more than 100, I mean, 60 show every day at the, the Expo. So I think it coincides all through with the Dubai uh, or with the UAE 50 years. And that would be a big celebration. So when we see what's happened with the Russians in this region and the Chinese in this region. Their ability to use economic diplomacy, really, yeah. um, to create relationships and ties that really weren't there before. Is the American mentality missing the boat there? <laughs> I think, you know, we, we are allied with the American. We have, we have, friend also with the Russian, with the European, with all, all countries. And we want Dubai and the UAE to be the best ground where we see all those people, regardless of what dispute they have outside. When they come here, everybody on a common ground and everybody happy and friends. Do you think that if there was a monetary gain to be seen at Expo 2020, <laughs> we'd see the Americans pony up for that a pavilion? I, I don't know. We have to sit and wait. It's not that far away to see the Expo in, in, in 10. 10 months now, I would say, that will be open. Your Highness, thank you so much for joining CNBC. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.